Okay, so I got a comment uh, asking me to share a little bit about my uh, electronics lab. So I figured I'd do a quick video and uh, just kind of give a little bit of a tour and uh, kind of explain why I have it and what I generally do with it. But uh, if you've watched some of my previous videos, you might have seen the electronics lab come up uh, during some of those projects where I did the uh, dump load for the wind turbine. Uh, that was the primary one where uh, this uh, uh, lab showed up in the video, and uh, that was using uh, Arduino um, uh, microprocessor and a bunch of other stuff. So um, anyway, uh, you might notice that a lot of this equipment is on the uh, sort of old side, uh, especially like my uh, favorite bench meter here, uh, which is the HP. Um, this thing is is fantastic and has uh, extremely good accuracy um, and below it you'll see another HP which is the power supply which is also extremely accurate as well and uh, the only problem with that is it's kind of on the loud side but um, you can see that I've got a pretty good array of equipment here to do pretty much everything I need with respect to uh, electronics I do a bunch of stuff with the Arduinos uh, where I do uh, uh, projects where I program them to do different stuff and uh, I, I've done a lot of that at the, on this lab bench here. Uh, primarily uh, the one that like I say you, you've seen before is that uh, uh, dump load project for the wind turbine. So anyway let's just take a look at what I got. So we've got on top there's the, uh, the 3D printer, which I've used for a bunch of projects here, uh, including the last project for the composting toilet that I just did uh, to finish it up a little bit. I, I used this to uh, print up a part for that. Um, and there has also been some uh, 3D printed stuff for other projects, including uh, the dump load project and the uh, EG4 battery installation project. Also, I uh, used this for that as well. Um, and obviously the, the, the bench meter, which is a great bench meter and the, the lab power supply. Uh, down on the bottom here, we've got a couple of oscilloscopes. I actually picked this one up here off of eBay. I pretty, I'm pretty sure it came from a school where it was almost never used. The, the hours uh, in its uh, counter are very, very low and it had a broken knob and I think that it got broken fairly early on and they just stuck it on a shelf. So I got that pretty cheap on eBay because uh, it had a broken knob, I just 3D printed uh, this knob right here for it. So again, the 3D printer comes to the rescue. Um, and then I've got another bench power supply there, and there, another bench power supply. This one's kind of neat because it has uh, multiple outputs, plus you can parallel and series those outputs to uh, both double the voltage and also to double the current. So that's kind of cool. Above it is the... Uh, AC uh, power supply. This is a variable uh, alternating current um, and you can actually flip a switch and have that lift the ground as well so you can have an isolated ground on that. Uh, and then in the middle between the two power supplies is the, um, the electronic uh, load. I can simulate uh, resistive load, um, I can have constant current, constant voltage, and I can test batteries or power supply, so this is a pretty useful device if I need to just generate, um, if I need to just create a load on something to give it something to do that, you know, tests it, uh, puts it on a little bit of stress, or just to test a battery, see how much current um, capacity, how much uh, uh, amp hour capacity it it's still has, that kind of thing. Um, then up here we've got a uh, LCR meter, actually two of them. I've got a, sort of a boutique sort of LCR meter here, which is actually pretty cool. And then an older one, again, HP. I've got a lot of HP equipment. I kind of like their stuff. And then above it is the fluke meter, bench meter. Um, excellent meter. The, the display is uh, getting a little dim on it, so uh, it's wearing out a little bit. But I use that uh, for a lot of stuff. Pretty accurate. And then a really cheap... Uh, signal generator because uh, I didn't need to do much with a signal generator. I just needed to generate a um, Basically a square wave uh, the reason I purchased that so I could generate varying square waves and and test things with that But that uh, pretty inexpensive. It does actually do the job. I'm going to replace this at some point with something uh, probably a lot better 
But, uh, and then on the bench here, you can see I have the uh, static mat and, uh, and the clip there where you can uh, put in, I don't know why there's an alligator clip on it, where you can put this to a, a wrist strap. And uh, that's uh, connected to uh, ground here. So this is actually tied to uh, uh, mains ground. Well, such as it is in an off-grid house. And uh, that's pretty much it, uh, you know, regular soldering station, nice uh, um, magnifier with light, and just sort of the general stuff that you get, uh, you accumulate for electronics, uh, handheld meters and such, and uh, hand tools. But yeah, this, uh, what I generally do with this is, uh, so, you know, anytime I need to do an Arduino project, it pretty much ends up here, and uh, that's primarily what this lab has been used for, although uh, I have done other stuff, uh, including the video I posted today where I uh, was uh, installing a new wind speed sensor for the uh, solar tracker. Before I did that, this is a wind speed sensor that doesn't work for my setup because this is a, it's a pulse, it generates a pulse. Um, and what I needed was a voltage, so I took this and brought it to the lab uh, bench to try and take it apart and see if maybe I could make something with this one that would work. And actually, I, I decided I could, uh, but I also decided that it would be easier <laughs> to just buy the $19 uh, sensor that I did purchase, the, uh, uh, the one that, I was shown, that was shown in the video I just, I just posted. So... Uh, but this was a uh, potential uh, maybe could have installed some kind of little DC motor in here and and uh, Got it working, but um, But yeah, I don't do a lot of the you know sort of complex stuff I, I um, Mostly it's just the Arduino stuff and some simple stuff testing batteries um, building some circuits to go with uh, some of the, the off-grid systems here and you know like I say that uh, Primary example being the dump load, and I did use this lab quite a bit for that, um, building the circuits for that, and I got a lot more elaborate on that project than I ever thought I would. Uh, if you want to check that out, I, uh, I have several videos, and there's a whole playlist for the dump load for the wind turbine uh, on my channel if you want to check those out. But that's the lab in a nutshell. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comments. I'll answer whatever questions you have. But... Uh, I try to get, like I say, I, I like the older stuff. It's, it's cheaper. I can, uh, it's, it's big and heavy. A lot of it's rack mount. But um, a lot of this stuff has been in labs where it's extremely well maintained. And when I bought this, um, you can see this the sticker on the top shows when it was last calibrated. And that was not long before I purchased this. So when I got this, it was in great shape, really, uh, really accurate. So I tend to Trying to kind of gravitate towards this older HP stuff, and I think it's great. I have some new stuff as well, but uh, um, you know the, the the older stuff, if you can get a good price on it, works just as well.